Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about my string. <laughs> hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my racket and my string setup. I'm also gonna give you my thoughts on rackets and strings. The reason I'm doing that is because I get a lot of requests. People have asked me to make this video. So that is what I'm gonna do. The racket that I'm using is the Head Extreme Tour. So it's the slightly heavier version and it weighs 305 grams. I actually thought it was 310, but it says 305. It is 16 by 19 and it's a 98 square inch. And the reason I know those things is because it tells me on the side of the racket. But had I not just looked at the side of the racket, I wouldn't know the answer to that. The strings that I use, they're a poly and they're yellow and they're fairly thick gauge. And I use a thick gauge string because I don't like to break strings because I'm lazy and then you have to get them restrung. So I don't know what the name of the string is. I would have to ask my stringer, but I do know they're poly, I know they're yellow, and I know they're strung at 52 pounds because I got them strung just before I came away. Now the reason I got these strings is literally because they are yellow and they match the racket. That is how much I care about rackets, and strings because my personal belief is they don't make a blind bit of difference. Now I can tell the difference. If I get this strung at 52 or 55, I can feel the difference. But within two, three minutes of playing, I've adapted to whatever string that I'm using. If you give me anyone's racket, if it's really heavy, two, three minutes and I'll adapt to it. You give me a really light, kind of like one of those big old men frames, I'll adapt to it within two minutes and I can play just fine. If you give me a lower level player's racket than me, so you know, I'm relearning to play left-handed, I'm around a 4-5 level with my left hand, give me any 3-0, 3-5, 4-0 player, and I will beat them with their racket, them using their racket, them using my racket. It doesn't matter what racket you give them, it doesn't matter what racket you give me, I'll beat them. The same thing works in reverse. If I play like a proper 5-0 player, or a college player, or a professional tennis player, and they use this racket, and I use their racket, or my racket, they'll beat me, because they're a better player. And we could all use any variation of racket and string, and it won't change the outcome. It literally won't. If someone's a better player, they're a better player with any racket. If someone's a worse player, they're a worse player with any racket. It is as simple as that. I believe that people spend far too much time thinking about rackets and strings. Now sure, for really, really elite players, like the best players in the world, you know, changing things and finding the exact setup, they're like finely tuned machines that can make the difference between winning and losing to an extent. But for most regular humans, and I fit into that category, it really doesn't make that much difference. I personally chose this racket uh, because it felt okay. I tried a couple out. I'd used the same Babolat frame for about 10, 12 years. I could no longer get it. So I just tried a couple of different rackets out. This one felt okay. So. I went with it, and that's literally how I made my decision up. I used to think about rackets and strings a lot when I was younger, but I also used to make a lot of excuses for pretty much everything. I lost a lot of tennis matches when I, were young, when I was young, and I used to blame everything else, and I didn't grow up with too much money, so I didn't have you know three of the same expensive racket. I just kind of had one good racket and another racket that wasn't quite as good, and I used to blame that stuff for the reason that I was losing. And one day, I just snapped out of it, and I realized that I had to stop blaming my rackets and focus on what I could control. So I sold my rackets, and bought completely crappy Wilson rackets at the time, and I started playing much better tennis with those crappy rackets because I'd completely changed my mindset and I was focusing on me rather than external factors and things that didn't really make a difference. And I kind of carried that on through after that and it's really served me well. Now I think for most players, they focus so much on this stuff and it doesn't change anything. And what they should be focusing on are things that they can actually do to become a better tennis player a better tennis athlete. Things like doing more strength work in the gym, more flexibility work, working on their conditioning, going out onto court or in their front room and spending time working on the footwork. These are things that will actually make you a better tennis player. So sure, if you love the technology, you just love researching rackets and strings, by all means do it. But if you want to become a better player, my recommendation to you would be don't spend any seconds researching rackets and strings if you haven't done your strength work, if you haven't done your flexibility work, 
if you haven't done your conditioning work, if you haven't done your footwork and your off-court training that you should be doing, because it's literally just a form of procrastination. It will make no difference as to the outcome. You won't suddenly start beating players that are beating you. That simply won't happen. It won't let you change your rating. The only way to do that is to become a better tennis athlete and a better tennis player. So they're my thoughts on rackets and strings, but what I do want to give you is something that will help you become a better player. I've got a free Tennis Vision Starter program. I'll place a link up there and I'll place a link down there so you can get hold of it. Everything that you do in tennis depends on how well you can see. So I've talked about strength training and flexibility and that side of things because most people are familiar with those and you should definitely work on them. But the biggest thing that holds most players back is vision. They can't react fast enough, they can't read where the ball's going, they can't track the ball through to contact, they can't judge distance and depth well enough, which affects their timing and that prevents them from becoming a better tennis player you can actually change that stuff with training. So that's why I've created this free program to help you with something that will give you meaningful changes within your game. So that's available to you if you would like it. Now, if you've got any questions about what I've covered here, if you've got thoughts on rackets and strings, are you the sort of player that just loves rackets and strings and talks about them to every opponent that you play with, uh, leave me a comment down below, or are you more in my camp and you know that it doesn't make any difference? Leave me a comment, leave me your thoughts, Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, give me that thumbs up and uh, I will catch you next time.